Oh, there's a hundred things that I love about Zimbabwe and the people. So I guess I have to pick my favorites. Zimbabwean people are naturally just very friendly. I don't know what it is that makes them so, but they are polite and they're willing to take time out of their day to speak with you. There's always exceptions. There's always rude people and there's always people wherever you go in this world that will, you know, not be polite. But as a whole, like the country is, is friendly and they, they smile more than uh, I was used to. It was, it was uh, fantastic to see. If you ever go into a house, it's, it's just culture that they, they offer you something to eat. When you talk about, um, the women in Zimbabwe, you call them mamas, if they are moms, you know, so like this mama here, which writing home is, is always funny to say, because my mother goes, what are you talking about? I'm your mother. Like, well, sorry, mom, this mama, um, they, they do adopt you, basically. They treat you like their sons, and they'll call you their sons. They'll say, my son, come here, you know, and, and uh, for me, that's, I loved that. It made me feel so welcome and loved. I felt like I belonged, you know, when, when people would, uh, would say things like that. And they would, they would discipline me like a mother would as well. When I do something wrong, they tell me. They are very straightforward with that, which is so entertaining when it's not me. <laughs> when it would be my companion getting scolded, I'd sit there like, oh, you should have known better, Elder. Now your mom is gonna be angry with you. When you go to a funeral, like, uh, it's tradition, I guess, for everybody to, to come and, and there. Uh, the family provides food for everybody. I guess it would be normally like in the village, but here it would be like anybody in the neighborhood. Uh, we'd come in and, and we'd be fed and sing songs and and they would talk about the life of the person. And it, while it was mournful, it was also an occasion to be together. And and uh, it brought, it, it was a very unified feeling. Um, so I guess overall I would say Zimbabweans are very good at, at, at uh, remembering that we all come from from smaller groups you know whether it be a tribe or a village or anything like that it's it's unified we are a family the classic zimbabwean dish i would assume most people would agree is sadza and chicken relish and vegetables so sadza is basically um th the staple diet because um they grow lots of of corn there they call it maize you know, not that big of a stretch, but then they uh, they have gr uh, grinding mills where you take your dried maize, grind it into flour, and so then you have lots of what's called milli meal, and you um, you take that, you boil it, you stir it up, and um, and it becomes basically a big paste. And some people like it really hard, some people like it really soft, but um, regardless, when you eat it, you are putting your fingers into burning hot lava, and so. You got to be careful when you're when you're first starting. Every every green missionary burns his fingers. I think at least a little bit because they do not know. So um, basically, you take that, and it's basically the uh, I'm saying basically a lot. You're taking something the consistency of play-doh, and uh, you take it, and you you can make it into a, either a ball or into a little scoop, and then you scoop up um, some gravy which has pieces of meat or vegetables and. And you take that and you eat that and it's absolutely delicious. The first time you have it, it's the strangest experience. But eventually you grow to love it. And then they have uh, some sort of meat and almost always chicken. And they know how to fry chicken there. It's not Kentucky chicken. It's not southern fried chicken. But it is a really tasty um, way that they do it. And then um, there's a thing called kovu which is a vegetable that grows in a stalk out of the ground. You'll see it being grown in every single person's garden. And as the leaves come off, they just pluck the leaves and then it continues to grow up and up. So it starts off you know, on the ground and eventually it'll be this tall and it'll just have a bare stalk with like five or six leaves at the top that they'll pick. And they chop it and fry that. So you use the sadza to basically dip it in and pick up veg vegetables or relish and the meat and eat that. Um, and when I say relish, I don't mean what they put on hot dogs here. I mean, uh, relish is basically any meat or gravy that they have with the food. So that's your basic meal. Sometimes people will, will like capenta. And capenta is these little tiny dried fish that I never really enjoyed. I ate it and I always was very grateful when, when someone offered it to me. And 
I don't know, but I guess you compare that to the chicken, and, and I, I definitely had my preference. Um, I think the hardest part about Capento was knowing that they had eyes that are looking at me. But it was it was great, and um, I was offered rabbit many times, and and uh, guinea pig once or twice. Um, the most extreme ones, one was Maklimbi or Madora, which is the caterpillars. And so these caterpillars grow by the thousands on some of these trees. And uh, they call them Mupani worms as well. And you'll, they'll fry those up and you'll eat those just like you would with the chicken. And I remember the first time I had those, I pick one up out of the bowl and I'm looking at it. And I'm just going, you are ugly. <laughs> I'm going to eat you. But oh, and so I pop it in and... You know, once you try and forget what it is that's in your mouth, it's delicious. It's just the face is what got me. And uh, there's something called Ishwa, which is these flying termites that uh, during a certain time of the year, kids will, will stand around these little termite holes and uh, they'll cover them because termites will come out at night. And so if you cover it, they think it's, it's nighttime because the daylight's no longer shining down. And so then they'll start crawling out by the hundreds and the flying ones are the ones you want to eat. The ones that are on the ground have angry little pincers that they hurt <laughs> and I didn't know that and I was trying to pick them up and the kids were like no 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 Marungu no and you know I got I got pricked pretty good those things do not let go and so they'll they'll grab the termites out of the air sometimes they'll pull off the wings and they'll stick them in a bag and they'll fry those up and eat those or you can just eat it right out of the air if you want which I did because the kids are like do it so I was like okay um, so that was good Zimbabweans like to eat parts of the chicken that we're not used to, like chicken feet and, and chicken neck. While it does take some getting used to, it is very edible and it's very tasty. At, at Once you've gotten over your preconceived notions of, of saying feet, you know, but they're pretty good. Rice is another big one, rice and, and beans, basically anything that comes big bulk bags and, uh, and can be, they come up with really creative ways to, to eat it as well. The biscuits there, the, the cookies, they call biscuits are, uh, you can buy really nice ones and then you can buy the really bulk bags that are basically like you know just flavor on flour and uh i actually bought those all the time because they it was something i would just sit there and study with the food that man now i'm really hungry <laughs> i miss that food really badly one of the drinks there is called mazoe and it's fantastic because it it's basically just syrup that you're supposed to dilute which i did not know and so my companion's like, hey, pour yourself a glass of Mazoe and pour me some as well. I went, sure. And I went to the kitchen and I'm brand new. Pour us both a glass and go back in and he grabs it and he looks at it and he knows what I just did. And he just looks at me and he watches me as I take it and I take a sip and five times the amount of concentration that I should be getting of sugar and, and my brain just exploded and I spit it out. I'm like... You know, I swear I could smell colors at that point. And, uh, and he laughs and he's like, you're supposed to dilute it. Yeah, now you tell me. But uh, occasionally you'll start craving that stuff once again. So it's good. I, I miss the Zimbabwean food a lot. Getting food is, is pretty cool because um, lots of people are entrepreneurs. And so they'll have little uh, stands outside their houses or, you know, on the street somewhere. So if you ever need fresh tomatoes or fresh vegetables, um, they're right there. Like you just, a lot of the time we'll just poke our head out the window to a little kid that knows us and we're like, hey, and we'll give them a dollar. Like, go get us some tomatoes and they'll run and they'll pick you, they'll grab you some tomatoes and they'll bring them back because kids are used to their moms having them do that all the time. So it's really fun. You feel really important. Like, hey kid, <laughs> little one. And they're like, yes. And they run and they get you something and then... If you're, if you're nice, you'll give them a sweet or something like that. So living in Zimbabwe, uh, one of the places I lived for about seven months was in what used to be the servants' quarters of, uh, of a much bigger house. So we lived in the little side uh, apartments, kind of like a, a shack on the, on the uh, outskirts. So you had, it had like a, you know, a small bathroom and it had a kitchen and, and a bedroom and that's all you need. The flooring there, carpets are not that popular just because vacuums aren't um, that big of a thing there. Um, Electricity and water will come and go very frequently, and so you can't really rely on that. So most of the time, people just sweep, and um, and so carpets aren't really that common of a thing. So what they'll do is they'll apply this stuff called cobra, which is like a, kind of a floor wax that if you sit on it too soon after uh, applying it, you will get a nice red 
streaks on your pants that I laughed at my companion several times when he was new because he didn't know better because water and electricity come and go uh, most of us would store bottles of, you know, of of water all around the house so that um, if it, if water goes for a few days then we'd still be able to drink we'd probably do really poor excuses of bucket baths although bucket baths can be the best you uh if if you have water but you don't have electricity you take the you know the the cold water and you put it in a in a you boil some of it on the, the gas stoves that we had and then you you pour it in with some cold water so you make it nice and uh, a good temperature for you and then you just go into the, the shower you get a cup and you just splash it on yourself rinse it out you know it's it's actually not nearly as bad as i was thinking it was gonna be i, I thought about that going and i've been spoiled with my showers at home like, <laughs> like my nice big water heater and and then transportation like into your area or into town they have these things called convies and it's basically like i think of the equivalent of a vw bus you know like you'll have the hippies used to have here in like the 60s and whatnot or my dad used to have and um you fit 25 to maybe 28 people you cram them into into one of those those uh vans and there it's interesting because you've got like four to a row that's maybe like that wide and so if you're if you're getting in there and then you see this large person come in you go uh oh <laughs> it's gonna get tight in here real quick if you're claustrophobic it takes a little while to get used to and if uh, otherwise it's a ton of fun and uh, the combi drivers will just drive around and they'll be yelling what their destination is. So they'll be like, towny town, downtown. And uh, so you'll, you'll wave them in and they'll come and they'll pick you up and you give them uh, the, the money for how much, uh, how far I guess you're going to go. And then you'll jump in there and it's really competitive. Uh, and then uh, you'll go in there and there's just this hub of hundreds of these, these, uh, these bands just all yelling, saying, this is, a, you know, going to... Uh, Ntumbani, Ntumbani, and Soxile, Bulawayo. So, um, that was, it was really cool. Hard part about that is when you go shopping and then you have to take all your food and you basically like, you can't buy too much at a time because you have to transport that back on the combi where there's already no room uh, and take that all the way back to uh, your apartment. And then they use American dollars there now um, with inflation and everything that went uh, Zimbabwe had a hard time with currency for a while. So now they use American dollars and South African Rand. And basically, and they'll use um, Pula from Botswana or, or anything that you, they know what the exchange rate is and you can use that for money. But because uh, bills are a lot easier to transport than, than coins, because those are really heavy, you don't really get change very often unless it's in South African Rand. So a lot of the time you'll buy something and then you'll get lollipops or candy in the uh, in change so you always have a few lollipops in your backpack if you're ever buying something on the market you have to you have to barter down because you have to realize they are they're they're working in a marketplace <laughs> they know <laughs> they're gonna try and get what they can uh, I bought something one time and my companion looked at me and he just goes you paid about four times what you should have paid for that bummer <laughs> so that's how it goes I mean, it is uh, a british a former british colony it was called rhodesia it's similar to british accents but uh, it's definitely its own version because it's a combination of african accent and uh and english and so uh let's see if i can still do this it would um when i would meet people they're like elder how are you today I'm like oh, i'm fine sister how are you oh it is so good to see you coming from north carolina i didn't quite talk like this but I, I would uh, I would speak and it would my words would run together sometimes and it was just you know a simple Southern American accent. So going there, no one would be able to understand me because I would speak too quickly in that accent. And so I had to learn to stop and enunciate all of my syllables. And this is how I spoke for two years, to the point when I called home uh, for Christmas and my family goes. What is wrong with the way you're speaking? And I went, what is, what are you talking about? You're talking like this. Well, I had to because that was the only way that I could be understood. I guess when you meet people on the street, you go, hi, how are you? And they say, I'm fine, how are you? And so lots of kids, when they see you on the street, all they've been taught to say is, how are you? And I'm fine. 
So they'll follow you for 20 minutes. How are you? How are you? How are you? And you go, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Okay, all right, this is not getting anywhere, but uh, it's, it's entertaining to see them do that. Sometimes it's frustrating, but most of the time it's entertaining. The accent for Shona is fantastic as well. They, that's pretty much the main language of, of Zimbabwe. Uh, most people are Shona with uh, one big city, Bulawayo, being Indebele, um, and they speak, uh, they speak that. And, and so Shona is the main, main language for most of the people. They, they'd say, how are you? So they say, Makadi. And you, you clap your hands as like in this way as a sign of respect. And so Makadi, which is how are you? And you say Tiribo, which is I'm, I'm fine. I think I might be mixing languages. Let me think. This is going to be bad. People are going to make fun of me. But um, people will say shop shop, which is sharp sharp. But because of the accent, it sounds like S-H-O-P. It just means like cool, cool. Um, uh, in Debele, the other language, I remember a little bit better just because I spent uh, I was really passionate about learning that one because it was fun for me to, to speak. And so you say, Salibonani, which is, you know, uh, how are you? And you say, Yebo. Yebo is yes. Um, but you say Yebo for a lot of different things. You say yes to like, you, they say hello and you go, yes. So, uh, Salibonani, Yebo, Unjani Baba. You go, Niapila, Unjani Mama. And you know, and you can uh, say, I'm, I'm fine, how are you? And, and occasionally if you're, if you're, uh, speaking to someone respectful, you change it up and you know, you say uh, you say it in a more um, I guess appropriate way. My tabasa in Shona, it, I think is probably one of the coolest ways to say thank you. Uh, in, in Malawi, Chichewa, you say Zikomo, which I think is also really cool. The fun things about Indebele is you can, you, there's some words that click. I was asking them to teach me and they say, okay, say Kumukatu get Kukatu. I go, what? And they say Kumukatu get Kukatu. Like, uh, uh like, okay, how about, uh, I'm a, po, po, po. I'm like, no, 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 no. And so it, it, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's hard to, to get used to. You have to learn that when it's written down, Q is, and X is, and C is, and even within there, there's like different ways of saying those. And, uh, another syllable is, it's, it's H L. So it's Hlope. So you're like, I'm Hlope, and, and it sounds like you got a lot of spit you know, in the side of your mouth, and usually they love it, and they go, look at this Marungu t you know, speaking uh, Shona, or uh, look at this uh, Kiwa. And so it was a lot of fun. I loved speaking those languages. Um, eventually, when you get so into it that your accent starts to disappear and you're speaking theirs, they, they love it even more. Yeah, I loved uh, Shona and Debele, Chewa. No, they, were, they were fun to speak. The first thing I would want to say is just how much I miss being around uh, all of the amazing people that I did meet when I was in Zimbabwe and Malawi. I, I honestly left for my mission as a boy and all of you took care of me and strengthened me and, and made me into, made me into a, a better man. I think about the people, you guys, that I met every single day, the, the ones that watched me struggle with, with learning how to say Maitabasa and, and Salibonani and, and Zekomo and, and just watched me go from Elder Skoro Skoro and uh, Elder Ski and Elder S and all the little nicknames you guys had. And I... I love you guys so much and I'm and I think about you and I pray about you often. I pray that one day soon I'll be able to come back and 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 see how you're doing in your lives. But until then I just have to hope that my information from from Facebook and and uh and from phone calls every now and then are going to be enough. I I called many of you my, my babas and my mamas, and that's true. You are my family, you're my parents, you're my brothers and sisters. And I was happiest in my life when I was with you. So know that I love you and I miss you.